What's going on guys? This is Von Nolik Puma, back with another Borderlands Remastered video, and today I'd like to go over eight of what I think are some of the best farming spots in this game. But before we do that, I regret to inform you guys that something terrible has happened. I hate to say it, but I need you guys to smash like on this video. No third punching will happen just so long as you smash like, but you gotta admit that I had you there for a second. If I did, smash like, and if I didn't, smash like. All smash likes aside, these are what I think are the best farming spots in Borderlands Remastered, starting now. Number 8. The Back Door While not one of my personal favorites, the back door can be a decent place to engage in some chest farming due to how it's a moderate risk area and for the fact that there are 3-4 to four chests you can get here. All the player has to really do is run through the map like I'm showing here in video, and you'll reach a point where you can jump up some rocks, and once you do, you should be able to encounter the first red chest in this location. From here, you can jump over the gap, run for a bit longer, and then you'll encounter an area that contains two chests side by side that you can also open. After that, and if you decide to go for the fourth chest, you can enter the final circular area where you fight the Royal Lands and Master McCloud, and if you do some quick platforming, you can jump to the very top of the window area where you see steel, and there's a chest that you can loot here as well. This is the fourth and final chest in this area, and once it's acquired, you can save and quit, and then rinse and repeat. As I said, I'm not a huge fan of this location, and that's mainly because of a lot of the initial running you have to do, but the spider ants here are pretty weak, which should make running this area fairly easy and low risk. At the very least, go ahead and try running this area and see what you think, and if you're not crazy about it, try running this next area, which is going to be Old Haven. While I will admit that Old Haven is a bit riskier since you're dealing with Crimson Lance that are tougher than your average bandits, there's actually a way to traverse this area fairly safely to safely farm the red chests here. All you have to do is start at the Old Haven entrance and run towards the rock and red awning like I'm doing here. Once you arrive, you can jump up on top of the rock, then up and onto the awning, and with the right positioning, you can then jump right up onto this small ledge, and then up and onto the roof that's covered with barbed wire. From here, simply follow the platforming path I am here to reach the very first red chest. Once looted, head across the rooftops, take out the Crimson Lance Soldier, turn around, and then you can loot another red chest. To reach the third chest, simply follow the path I'm taking here, jumping from one rooftop to the other, then go up the stairs, jump across another gap, and if you follow the path, you'll come across the third chest. At this point, you can save and quit, or you can go for the fourth chest. I'd recommend a Lilith for this, but just follow the path that I am here, past all of the enemies, and past both turrets, and you should see the fourth red chest pretty easily. Once you're done looting it, you could save and quit, and then try this all again. There are also plenty of silver chests in Old Haven that you can loot here as well, so that's an option if you're interested in that. I'd recommend sticking with red chests, but that said, I have found some legendaries in some silver chests before. So, if you want, be sure to look around, and you can definitely find a lot more chests here. If you do go for those, just be aware that the Crimson Lance here are pretty tough and are a bit stronger than your average enemies. Number 6. Sledge's Safe House Compared to Old Haven, Sledge's Safe House offers the same amount of chests but at a potentially lower risk to the player since the bandits here aren't usually that difficult to take down. In order to farm this area though, you'll need to make sure you've completed the corresponding Claptrap rescue mission for the area. Once you have, start near the fast travel and run to the area where you encounter your first few enemies. Head to your right and then follow the path I'm doing here, and as soon as you do, take a left and go down the hallways here. The first chest is located towards the end of the hallway, while the second chest is located near the claptrap that you rescued. Go ahead and loot both of these and then head back out of this area and back into the main little circular area. Go forward here, and eventually you'll come across some stairs with an arrow pointing down. Head down here, and then turn left and enter the room with the counter. Check behind the counter, and you'll find the third chest. Once you've looted it, head out past the arrow on your left, immediately turn left once you passed it, and go up the stairs, and from here, platform across the surfaces to get to the fourth and final chest. Once you've looted this final chest, you can then save and quit, and then repeat all of this again if you choose to do so. K 
keep in mind that you can also go outside and back into the arid hills to farm a fifth chest that's above the entrance to the entire area. So technically, this method may actually give you access to five chests rather than four. That said though, I think the four chests method is a bit faster, and you can basically just save and quit, reload back in the area, and then do it again. Otherwise though, I think you'll find this is a great method, just make sure you've done the Claptrap rescue mission beforehand. Number 5. The Iridian Promontory So, the Iridian Promontory is home to a slew of powerful Iridian enemies, and while that would suggest this area is fairly high risk, it can actually be a benefit to players that are playing as Mordecai. Provided you've properly specced and picked up the Trespass skill to bypass the massive shields on all of the Iridians here, in addition to specking for the Ransack skill, which can increase the amount of loot drops that you get, you can greatly increase the amount of quality loot that you receive from all of the Iridian enemies. After that, it's really just a matter of farming all of these chests in order, and as you should be able to see from some of the Lilith gameplay I'm showing here, this is the path that I would recommend going on in order. And the reason I've decided to do things this way, rather than go over the area of each specific chest, is simply because it would take us like 5 minutes to go over all of the chest locations in the Iridian Promontory. So as you should be seeing in video, these are how you get to many of the chests while farming this route. Now the reason I would recommend you come here to farm is also if you have a goal to also level up your characters as well. Iridians yield high experience when they're killed, and provided you take the time to kill all of the Iridians for XP, and then you loot the various chests throughout, you should be getting a pretty decent amount of loot as well. Especially if you're playing Mordecai, where you can take advantage of Ransack and a Scavenger Class mod to get those extra loot drops. Ultimately, I really like this area as it's good for leveling and for getting some extra loot, so if you want to go this route, you definitely should. Number 4. Tartarus Station As far as chest farming goes, Tartarus Station is probably the best area that the player can take on that's both A, very low to no risk, and B, doesn't require the use of any glitches. All the player has to do is simply complete the Robot Revolution DLC, and upon turning in the final mission, which is helping as its own reward, wait, no it isn't, the player will gain access to a secret little area that can be revisited multiple times and contains 10 plus chests. All the player has to do is go to the Hyperion gift shop, look behind the counter, and there should be a button that you can press that leads you down into the basement. Once you arrive, you can open all of the chests that are located here and just check what loot you get. From here, you can save and quit, and then reload back into Tartarus Station again to continuously do this over and over again to get as much loot as you want. This is a great place to come if you're looking for some decent loot. The chests here seem to have a pretty high yield rate for legendaries in my experience, and while I think you could potentially get rarer or more desirable things elsewhere, this might not be a bad place to come if you're looking for a few specific legendaries, or maybe even a few decent mashers or anarchies. As I said, I think this is the best place for chest farming that doesn't require glitches, so if you want some good gear, just be sure to complete the DLC, and this option is available to you. Number 3. The Vault now, in order to farm this regularly, you'll need to perform a glitch slash exploit, but coming here may actually be a pretty good idea since it offers an extremely low risk method to help you farm for the brand new Gearbox Legendaries. All you have to do is make sure you've beaten the Destroyer for both playthroughs, and then from here, you'll need to go to the vault in the playthrough that you don't want to obtain the items in, and then check the area to see that there are no chests. Once you have, you'll want to fast travel to any of the DLC areas, and then save and quit. At this point, go ahead, reload your character, but before you do, make sure you've selected the opposite playthrough that you previously loaded into. Once you load in, simply fast travel back to the vault, and upon doing so, you should see the seven chests appear that you got when spawning the destroyer. Regardless of which playthrough you do this in, the middle chest should always contain one of the new Gearbox Legendaries that scales to your level. However, provided you pull this off for playthrough 2, you can get all of the other 6 chests in the area to properly scale to your level as well. And thus, it's best to start in playthrough 1, so you can then switch to playthrough 2 to get the most benefit. Personally, I could see this being a bit cumbersome on console depending on what load times are, but this is probably the best and most low risk method for obtaining the new Gearbox Legendaries. And if you do it right, you can get some decent chest farms from the other chests as well. Number 2. Cromorax 
Though it's high risk and you'll need to be properly prepared beforehand, Cromorex is the boss to farm in this game. You'll need to complete the Nox DLC first, but once you do, you can finally start farming him by simply taking on and completing the You Will Die side quest. The main reason you want to farm Craw is because he drops a lot of high quality loot, including purples, legendaries of both the traditional and newly added gearbox variety, as well as some pearlescent gear as well. The trick is just figuring out how to beat him. For Cromorax himself, you're going to need a decent high projectile weapon or a weapon with high critical hit damage bonus, and you'll need to destroy all six of the purple spots that are located on his face, back, and both his fore and rear pincers. For Cromorax's minions, you'll need a high quality fire, shock, and corrosive weapon to match the green craw enemies, the small craw maggots, and then the large purpled craw enemies respectively. After that, it's just a matter of proper timing and trying to take out the spot on Cromrax's back first to make the rest of the fight way easier. With enough practice, you'll be able to pull this off with a great degree of success, and I'm usually able to beat Cromrax in about 3-4 to four minutes. Assuming you did this enough times, I'd be surprised if you didn't get some great gear out of it. Just make sure you are prepared beforehand, because it's definitely a high-risk method. And for our final entry, number 1, the Crimson Fastness. So without a doubt in my mind, the Crimson Fastness is one of the best places to farm in Borderlands Remastered. After all, it's a perfect entry for subverting expectations, or not doing what the viewer expects for dramatic effect. I mean, we all know that the Crimson Armory just sucks, it's not like you can get anything good there like Pearlescence and Legendaries, and there's totally not a glitch that lets you farm the area endlessly. I mean, who wants Pearlescence when we can subvert expectations? And by the way, Smash like for subverting expectations. Anyway, with that out of the way, I think it's fair to say that the Crimson Armory is the real or true best place to farm in Borderlands Remastered. After all, it's pretty low to moderate risk as all you really have to do is beat General Nox to access the area. And once you do access the area, you can come here and potentially get really good stuff due to how there are a bunch of Crimson Lance just here. Now normally, you would either need to complete the Loot Larceny, Supermarket Sweep, or It's Like Christmas missions to come here and farm. However, and provided you exploit a glitch involving these missions, you could potentially keep these quests active and simply come here to farm to your heart's content with no 3 minute time limit. All you have to do is kill Nox, and then head to the Armory, and just before you enter the room where you prime the bomb, check a seam in the floor and then simply fall through. Then crouch to fall down into the room below that contains all of the chests, and from here, you could simply just go through the entire area, opening every single chest you see. You will need to be careful not to get too close to the main mission waypoint on your minimap though, as if you do, it potentially completes a portion of this quest which you don't want. So be sure once you've accessed this area, to try and avoid the main terminal area where you initially prime the bomb, as well as some of the areas that are right below it. At the end of the day guys, I hope you guys are glad that your expectations weren't subverted here, and I think for now, that's going to wrap up this particular video. If you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to leave a like, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload my next Borderlands video, and as always, and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel, take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.